we are now going to discuss the dramatic tragedy or tragedy as a literary term the term tragedy that we find in the context of literature is not as simple as we find in newspaper articles or in casual day-to-day -day talking that a tragic incident has happened with a lot of bloodshed with a lot of deaths with some some uh, dropping tears with some uh, lamenting aspects these common commonality is same but uh, the tragedy as a literary term defines in um, particular uh, phonology that uh, can be explained through from aristotelian term what i am saying is that tragedy or tragic drama that we at present going to define is not as simple as we happen to meet in its uh, literary presentation or in its uh, linguistic presentation that we find in texts uh, particularly in casual texts but when we define a tragedy or a tragic drama it refers to way back to the aristotelian period where uh, the great Greek literary um, um, festivals of uh, the wine god is being uh, celebrated where Ascyla, Sophocles and Euripides, these three great dramatists wrote about great tragedies and they, they were represented uh, in front of the vast audience and it was applauded and there was a uh, prize ceremony also and all these type of uh, a dramatic presentation that were well in the style of tragedy has been explained or uh, has been critically observed in, in 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 aristotelian critic that is called poetics so uh, we will first try to define what is tragedy in aristotelian definitions in front of aristotle there had been the examples of Aristotle's contemporary dramatists. Particular writings of those three great tragedians, Ascylus, Sophocles and Euripides, has set a particular parameter of defining a tragedy. What Aristotle did in his poetics, he summed up the elements of tragedy from those tragic dramas and print them into a catalog where from we will try to understand what was the purpose of tragic writing and what was the design behind a tragic writing and what particular uh, message a dramatist a dramatist try to deliver through his tragic dramas suppose uh, in those dramatic presentation in those great dramas tragic dramas i am not uh, giving you uh, any kind of specific example but i am just uh, telling you what aristotle says that it has the component part of unity a tragic drama must contain a unity what what is the unity unity means a a collectiveness and an adhesive that will uh, attach all the elements of the drama together so that it can be presented it can be uh, understood properly and the dramatist uh, fulfills its his purpose of giving some lecture in that element of unity there is three things unity of place unity of time and unity of action unity of place it refers to that a drama should not constitute uh, within uh, a parameter of a or a within a geographical uh, parameter where the drama should be presented in such a way that it will cover that geographical uh, um, geographical location which is not beyond which is not beyond the uh, dramatic persona's uh, geographical location that means one uh, character cannot uh, be presented in such location where 
in the dramatic way a person cannot go there so the geographical location or the place place is being very restricted so uh, it is sum up uh, that uh, one revolution of this sun that means one full day that means 24 hours might be the limit of the geographical location the place is being collectively or unitedly being represented through these dramas or it should represent within the drama of tragic drama then comes the unity of action there should not be any such action which is not related which is not uh, collectively related to the tragic plot and uh, the place uh, the the action should not be such which is not directly related and which action cannot be performed uh, within this geographical location that that purview is also being uh, presented so unity of uh, action is there now the unity of action is uh, unity of time has already been told unity of now that unity of time that it refers that uh, a particular time frame should be maintained within the tragic plot which is uh, uh, which is quite comprehensible and logical that simple simple thing it might be extended or it, it might be compressed but the limitation must be set forward by the dramatist in such a way which is quite understandable and quite quite which is quite um, appreciable if not it is being appreciated in its true term uh, then uh, the tragic unities or the cohesiveness of the drama will be set out so the unities or the three unities are the very term that aristotle has propounded in his tragic now comes about the tragic hero who should be the tragic hero a tragic hero Arist aristotle gives a perfect definition of a perfect tragic hero but you must understand that in modern day tragedy or the tragic presentation in a dramatic format is not pure enough it is being mingled as with the changes of time the definition of dramatic requirement has changed so you will not find a pure tragedy in its modern term but uh, the originality of the tragic hero as it has been defined by aristotle in his uh, poetics is very clear that a person must be higher than the rank of ordinary man he should not be a ordinary people he must be a person who is in higher strata living in higher caliber or living in a higher social position number two he must be a good person but having some bad qualities he says he must have hubris he must have some sensation of pride or dramatic flow neither a good man nor a bad man but having some excessive pride in his characteristic that hubris or that pride is the very tragic flaw that will make him possible a great tragic hero because when he downfall he should be uh, looked at that how great a person he was but how great a fallacy he entered and that's why he he has fallen so a person who is of higher strata who is having a higher caliber of lifestyle or having some excessive quality which is beyond ordinary people and the person who is either good or bad having that both quality mingled together and have some pride in, in his characteristics so and uh, there is another point that should be remembered that uh, if such a person is being uh, entertained if uh, if not such is the case if not such um, person is not chosen as a dramatic uh, hero or a, in a tragic drama what would happen it should uh, make an injustice uh, suppose a good person a virtuous person just fallen 
just fallen from dignity to zero, from uh, below that dignity, from uh, a gross, uh, it, it should be a gross violation of social norms. It, it is a pure injustice. But the democratic feeling will be uh, not such as why. There is a, uh, there should be a pain, a loss, but not a tragic intensity would be there. A real tragedy should give a, um, a releasing one. That uh, Aristotle has says a kind of um, catharsis or a kind of um, purgation or purification. Why the audience go into the theater hall? He just oh, if if you if you are given a handsome prize, but why? Even if you are given handsome prize, why you should shed tears? There is no logic in shedding tears. But shedding tears has some logical bending. If I say, if uh, as Aristotle say, uh, that uh, it is a kind of a cathartic uh, way of uh, thinking. Suppose if you are having some foul emotion just in front of audience, uh, in front of the uh, seated as an audience, you are observing that drama and you are paralleling yourself with that hero and you find as the hero is downfall and you are entertained that you learn that as you are also having such and such qualities but you are not doing that uh, foul action or foul intensity you have not entertained that's why you are survived so that's a kind of relief to you and if you are having such foul emotions with you you will say tears with that hero and that uh, that excessive emotion will be purgated from you that you will be released so, so it's it's a kind of releasing uh, medical treatment like mm, that kind of thing and you will be rejuvenated by uh, that tragic traumatic uh, presentation so but what Aristotle says about tragic hero is very simple I, I, I give you in a uh, nutshell that uh, tragic hero must be of a higher strata of living and uh, he he will possess or he must possess some great qualities which should be uh, beyond our understand beyond our reach uh, he should be a great hero he should be a great warrior he should be a great king he should be a great social personality and he must have some uh, amartya or or rather uh, lot of judgment in him and that makes his downfall uh, and um, in that way that tragic hero or the fall of the tragic hero it will be justified and as a audience we are having a cathartic feeling or a catharsis or a purgation or purification of our heart by the tragic show by our uh, watching experience we will have a catharsis or a um, purgation or a rejuvenation of our soul of new understanding it is said that in drama conflict is the very essential part the essence of a drama is its inherent conflict the conflict is not between rights and wrongs and the conflict is not uh, between some uh, right was version and some left version these kind of rights and wrongs are melodramatic as rg has said in his critic this melodramatic presentation is gross drama whether in realistic tragic drama even though it may be far from re reality the tragic drama should represent a conflict that is inherent within the character the character will uh, constantly war against these two rights the uh, conflicts between two rights either both are the rights which way he should take which which end he should meet that conflict is the very essence of the tragic drama so conflict that is the essential part of the drama must be interwoven within the structure of the plot and in that plot that is based on characteristic development or rather development of characters that each and every character if not each and every but the main focus characters or the protagonist must represent that conflict within their part and that conflict is not between rights and wrongs but between two rights that he or uh, his inner psyche should call between 
or war between and that is the very essence of the tragic drama one interesting thing in uh, aristotle discussion is the democratic quality of the tragedy it means even if even if the hero is a great person even if he is a king or a prince or princess he or she must have to obey the order of nature the order of humanity if he disobeys those rules he or she must meet the tragic end and here is the democratic feeling the rule is the same for the ordinary people and for the princess or queens or uh, great personalities so this democratic feeling also uh, pull the audiences in front of the tragic dramatic presentations there is another notable aspect in tragedy uh, that is nemesis part or which is called fate or destiny the fall of the tragic character having the qualities that is called hamartia or the uh, the tragic flaw that the main character entertain or have the fallacy or have that fall is not the single reason by which uh, the tragic character has the downfall or he meets the ultimate tragedy in his life it is the nemesis part or the fate or the destiny that plays a upper hand but destiny is not at all most powerful if the character is not assisting it or the f- assisting the forces uh, to meet that destiny so nemesis is a aiding agency that um, that help the or rather that drag down the tragic hero into the destiny or the downfall in ancient greek literature particularly in the tragic dramas we find out uh, a group characters or a host character that is choric characters or a group or band of um, fellow dancers who come and inform uh, various incidents of stage uh, in fact in fact on the tragic dramas bloody scenes are never happen on stage they are being reported by the messengers and that messenger part is uh, played by choras a group dancers they often perform with dance with music and with merriment they um, they deliver few vital messages to the audiences so this type of choric characters are the um, uh, key elements in uh, in ancient greek dramas and which uh, the tradition has been later followed also but that choric or that group characters is being devised in such a way it has been moduled into few characteristic modes in other dramatic performances that i will discuss in later lectures even though aristotle has clearly defined that a tragedy has no part um, to play in comedy and the comedy has no part to play in tragedy but somehow and somewhere and there is a comic relief that we often find in uh, ancient greek dramas and later the tradition has been followed it is called comic relief a part or a particular scene or a very vital cinematic uh, presentation in where, where a dreadful dramatic or a fearful incident is being released is being released the burden of that fearful scene is being released by a comic scene uh, so the burden or the heaviness of the atmosphere is being lessened that that part is called comic relief and it is being designed and uh, not to mitigate uh, the tragic intensity but uh, to mitigate uh, the tragic intensity for a, a brief period of time just for a pause but after that the tragic inten- intensity intensified so comic relief uh, relieves a portion or a particular brief moment uh, from the tragic monotony but later it arrests us into the tragic atmosphere it uh, drag us into the tragic atmosphere more profoundly more deeply now reading through all the texts from ancient greek literatures till the modern age 
there are so many great uh, writings on tragic dramas has been performed on stage as been uh, as well as it is being written uh, i have already discussed sophocles euripides and aeschylus these these three great uh, artists has uh, written many dramas and which are still being popular and being performed and and uh, the tragic intensity and purity and they are the super class now after that period um, i am just concentrating on english literature uh, then it came through passed through the chosarian period and uh, from the pre shakespearean period the university wits uh, seven university wits uh, they performed uh, many a dramas wrote many a great tragedies and these those were very popular and then in the hand of shakespeare it was matured into a great palace and in later stages gradual development uh, which occur in 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 systematic way it transformed into devised devised into new platforms newer modules and in the modern age the drama has been still being performed the purity of the uh, great tragic tradition has been Uh, minimized but the intensity uh, or the purity of the uh, tragic intensity that we are talking about uh, is still somewhere uh, in modern drama but uh, in uh, um, true to the term uh, tragedy as a purity is quite missing in modern uh, theatrical presentation but it is as uh, not neither we can classify them as as if as in in pure cl- 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 classification we cannot uh, term it as a pure tragedy but that tragic intensity of that uh, aristotelian sense is quite missing but in modern age as, as for reference in irish drama uh, riders to the sea um, by james singh it is it is a tragedy of aaron people uh, particularly of a, a bereaved mother and that is a full intensity of the tragic monotony and and tragic um, uh, sorrows uh, with, with much of appeal and full of popularity so throughout the ages throughout the ages tragedy has gained its momentum uh, and it evolved from the aristotelian term that purity has been changed but it has been modulated into different directions and different caliber and it is still being popular and the, still we are uh, we are um, uh, um, heading towards theater halls to watch a great tragic film or a tragic drama sometimes uh, it is being uh, discussed why the western tragedies are so intense whereas uh, the asian writing if 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 uh, indian subcontinent writing of the ancient text is lacking tragedy popa the answer is purely philosophical we the indian we the people um, thinks about aftermath of life even uh, we do not think that our life ends within a single span of lifetime the cycle of life is like that of eternal so the intensity of crime that we have done the punishment is not uh, readily uh, pending for this life alone is not the ultimatum in our philosophy rather we believe in that the punishment that are pending might be um, carried forward into next generation or the next life so the intensity the punishment uh, that uh, the tragedy has its uh, ultimate um, goal is not atoned Uh, at the final gesture or the or the final moment in uh, indian sanskrit text whereas in uh, western drama uh, we find out that philosophical notion that the if you do the crime this life you will meet the punishment this this life not for that future life so the philosophical end from the philosophical end indian uh, dramas are Uh, more uh, prolonging that discussion of punishment to the aftermath of life to the next generation to the posterity uh, to the aftermath of life or life beyond whereas 
the western is thinking that the punishment should be i have tried to explain you the various principles or ethics you can also that follow my blog where i have written several articles on this topic uh, please subscribe my channel and get tuned to get further lectures on this topic and other topics thank you